that virus of the false spirit of Vatican II simply corrupted the church. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. It's May, obviously, and this is the month of Mary, our Blessed Mother. Faithful Catholics view Our Lady as Mother, and rightfully so. Our Blessed Lord gave Mary to all of us as Mother as she stood at the foot of the cross when he said to her of John, Woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. The reason John's Gospel stands separately from the rest in its theological depth is because John had Our Lady living under his roof for many years. Imagine the insights into Our Lord that Our Lady would have imparted to John. Her Divine Son would have been all she spoke about. All the Gospels have the Holy Spirit as their source of inspiration, but John has, in addition, the spouse of the Holy Spirit and the mother of the Son. At some point, St. John would have come to recognize that who was living under his roof was not just Mary, but rather the woman, the woman of Genesis, the one who would crush the head of the serpent. If we only had St. John's Gospel, we would never know Our Lady's name was ever Mary. He never uses her name. He only refers to her as woman because that is how our Lord refers to her. He calls her woman at the Cana wedding, and he calls her woman from the cross. In the work, The Mystical City of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda, whose body has remained incorruptible for going on 400 years, she reveals a most interesting fact among hundreds. On Golgotha, on Good Friday, unseen to everyone, Satan and his legions of demons were present, mocking our Lord, trying to get him to give way to temptation. As the moment drew closer to our Lord delivering over his spirit to the Father, the rebellious legions experienced a huge weakness overcome them, a draining out of their power. So frightening to them was this that they began to withdraw from Calvary and flee back to hell. At that moment, a great chain was drawn about all of them, which prevented them from retreating, and the end of the chain was placed into the hands of Our Lady. She had complete mastery and control over them, and she forced them to remain and behold for themselves the great victory of her Son over them. No wonder the demons so fear her, and she is frequently called upon in exorcisms. What a beautiful image that scene on Calvary presented, detailed by our Blessed Mother herself to Sister Mary of Agreda. It's important to remember that Golgotha translates into the place of the skull. From the time of the fall, when God promised that the woman would crush the head, the skull of the serpent, this moment on Calvary was anticipated. And here on the spot of ground named the place of the skull, our lady herself, the woman, crushed the serpent's head by her giving the world her son, whose sacrifice redeemed us from his power. Stay very close to Mary, your mother. God gave her to you as mother, protector, as the twelve-star general in your spiritual war. Whatever you struggle with, whatever you pray most ardently for, consecrate it to her, offer it to her hands for her remedy. Those hands which hold your prayers before her heavenly Son are the same hands which held the chains of torture for Satan and his legions and forced them to witness their crushing defeat. There is not anything that Our Lady cannot accomplish for you. She was the first to hear directly, nothing shall be impossible for God. And now she set in place to remind us that with God all things are possible. Rededicate yourselves this month to the Holy Rosary. If you have not made the St. Louis de Montfort consecration of yourself to Our Lady, do so. She is gathering her army even now for the coming persecution, the coming scourge. There is nothing to fear in this gathering storm if you are under her mantle. We have a mother who is also a general. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Their experienced team of professional agents is ready to help you in every step of your journey, whether you are buying, selling, or both, and anywhere in the world. On top of that, what makes Real Estate for Life so great is that with every property bought or sold through one of their agents, 
an average of $1,000 and sometimes much more is donated to support the culture of life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes at the same time. Don't wait any longer. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more.